Father, we ask that you cleanse and sanctify us for this deliverance. Ebony, get back. This is what all your movies are about for me, which is about trust. And first and foremost, is actors trusting you because each piece you've done has been about somebody who hates themselves so much they can't get past that and they have to, to find love for everybody else. And this feels like this kind of apotheosis of everything you've done up until now. Mm. Wow. Yeah. You know my work. That's oh, yeah. Elvis, good. you know my work. <laughs> um, look, I, I didn't want to do this movie because I felt that it was um, horror it, back 15 years ago when Tucker Tooley, who's my partner from, from Billy Holiday and also um, Shadowboxer, my directorial debut, came to me with it. Hey, Yay, Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I didn't want to do it because uh, I felt that, uh, and my mom felt that demons were real. This is based on a true story. I mean, the documentary is. I out. saw that she gets an uh, uh, associate producer credit. That's, I mean, yeah, yes. she. The document yeah. is the documentary. There, there are court documents. There are um, the social worker has spoken. The police have spoken. This police is, chief spoke about it. Yeah. This is so. Um, I didn't want. I didn't want that. I know how I work. I'm an open portal, and I didn't want uh, that. And, um, but then I realized we're in such dark times. This is 15 years later, and I don't know where we're going to land. It's not horror. It's not a horror. It's like about finding your light. Because at any given moment, we could be gone. Like mm. that. Mm. And I think that uh, for me, I needed to find my higher power. For me, it's Jesus Christ. For some, it's Buddha or Allah, or, you know, whoever that higher. It could be yourself. But you have to find your higher power because I, I, don't, I don't know where we are right now. Mm. I don't know where we are. Mm. It's a time, I think, where faith is being questioned and, and nobody has the answers. And do we have to ask you, because, again, this is such a demanding piece and you have to try to figure out how to play a girl who's trying to find out who she is at the same time trying to figure out who her mother is and what that love means in that house. And it's such a poised performance and we can see your patience in it. What was your feeling when you read that script for the first time? How, how old are you? I'm 17 now, but... Um, so he I, should be a child protective services or putting you through all this. Okay, we've answered that. Um, no, I think I, w I was 15 when The Deliverance was first introduced to me. And I think what drew me to the project so much is just like what you said. I think it's a, it, it is kind of a horror film, but at its core, at its center, it's a story about family. And I think specifically a family that's trying to uplift one another mm -hmm. and um, I think for my character for Shantae I think what I loved about her was that she's is or for me at that time was very relatable you know I think we're 15 she was 15 around the same age so finding herself but also trying to something that something deeper trying to navigate her life while all these things are happening to her all these things are happening to her family um, and also she's I mean, her mom is newly divorced or newly separated, so navigating that relationship, that new family dynamic, and I think that was that little, that nuance within the broader spectrum of the fact that it's a horror film was what drew me into the project. Because you have a great moment when she gives you the box. I just love her. Just love oh, God, her. We, we love her. So <laughs> but you can feel the love come through because there's a moment of belief when she gives you that phone that she said that you didn't deserve. Uh, trying to make up for her own ability, wondering if she can get it for you or not. And the look on your face like, well, maybe I should believe. I mean, that's such a great moment. Talk about you guys playing that, because that's, that's such a great scene. Mm -hmm. When she gives you the phone at the, the birthday party. At the uh, birthday party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think for Shantae, I think it was a bit more than, than just getting a phone. I think for a while, bef before we even get to that point, I think Shantae is kind of doubting her mother and... Mm -hmm. and, and Doubting what her Not kind of. She's nope. doubting. <laughs> Definitely is doubt, doubt, um, doubting. me, basically. Okay. Okay. <laughs> doubting Ebony. Um, and I think th that moment was, I guess, the first time that we see them kind of loving on each other. And I think that was a very special moment for us. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we're family. So it wasn't like, it wasn't, we didn't hate each other. We don't hate each other. It, it looks bad, but it's not that bad. <laughs> um, but I think for the characters, I think it was a very sweet moment. And... Um, showed a different side to the relationship. Yeah, and I think for uh, for 
Ebony, I think it's, you know, first of all, she loves her kids, clearly. And we see that throughout the movie. She is obviously a flawed person or she is a hurt person. But she would do anything for her kids. Um, so there's the love there, you know, even when there's the fighting. But I think in addition to that, for herself or even for selfish reasons, I think Ebony feels like a failure in a lot of areas of her life. She's drowning in a lot of areas of her life. And she's constantly trying to prove that she is worthy, you know? And so that's what, as we look at in the movie, that's what cycles of abuse do, right? You know, you don't feel worthy. And so I think for her, what I love in that moment is that there's her loving on her daughter, loving being able to do this for her daughter, throw the party for her daughter, to just have a moment of levity, you know, and such heaviness. But I think also she felt accomplished in that moment. I That's think the one just, moment in the movie where she feels like she's absolutely, in control. Absolutely. Like, not only did I put this party together, mm. I bought my daughter a cell phone, you know, I'm like, and they might not have been the prices they are today, but it was still expensive, you know. So, um, yeah, like $1,200 for a cell phone is crazy, right? Anyway, I digress. But, um, <laughs> but so yeah, I think there's, I think we see the underlying love of her daughter, but we also see this kind of, you know, not necessarily selfish, but we do see her feel accomplished. And I think it's a beautiful moment. I think, you know, because it's a moment, the only moment in the movie she's really in control of the entire mm -hmm. sequence. Yes. She's put this party together. Her mother's semi-behaving. Um, <laughs> her mother is well distracted. <laughs> that's why I said semi. She, yes. She's, like, she's put a toy in front of her mom. And her mom is, is acting in the best way that she can. And it feels like the moment of, the only moment of light before things get really dark. Yeah. And and I wanted to ask you about that, Lee, because first of all, I'm sure Glenn Close has never seen that many black people before in her entire life. And you have, you have her in, in her hair from Fatal Attraction, so that reminds us of what a monster she can be. I'm, I'm most excited about the Glenn character. I did it specifically to separate her from the real story, uh, but most of my friends, a lot of my friends are biracial, and what is it like to explore a black girl with a white mom. Now, a lot of white people don't know who she is, but she's embraced by this black community, by black people, because she's very specific to the black culture. And black people identify, know her, or obsessed with her. She is a black woman that only, she's a white woman that only dates black men, that is, um, that has black children and black her grandchildren. And, um, and she's and she's very specific to our culture, and that's the uh, and I'm, and I was nervous about that for Glenn because uh, I don't Glenn didn't know who she was. It took her, she didn't understand about body positivity and black women, <laughs> so it took Andra and Monique and uh, and Anja Ellis to sort of walk her through what it was like and why black women are comfortable in their skin, and that was an epiphany for her. And uh, I'm most proud of that because we have never seen her on screen before. Mm -hmm. Black people have never seen this woman that's a fabric of black culture mm -hmm. on screen before. So I'm really, really proud of that mm -hmm. moment, what, what she did and her commitment to that. I think it's really, again, it's, it's so late in, in this way. This movie feels like it's everything you've done has been put into this in some way or another. And, and, and I wondered if that's what scared you about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because how do you tell a lead? How am I telling a horror movie? Is it a horror movie? It's not really a horror movie. It's a faith-based thriller. So what am I? What am I doing? I'm just trying to tell her story, which was a horror movie. When you think about Precious, Precious was a horror movie. I was going to say there hasn't been a movie you've done that hasn't a, a, mm -hmm. a scene yeah. that felt like it could be an horror movie. Mm -hmm. But again, it's all about this kind of psychology of pushing you away past self-loathing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are no tropes. I mean, the thing is, is that. The, the, the demons do the same thing that they've done in other films. They climb up the wall, so how do I, how do I keep that, how do I make that different? But th th it happened. So, you know, how do, how do you, uh, you know, the, uh, the school stuff happened. So how do you, it was hard, really hard. Let me ask you, Demi, do you, do you believe, do you think this story really happened? I mean, because there are lots of questions in it. <laughs> we just got a text from uh, the, the daughter. Yes, to answer your question. The daughter. I do. You do. Yeah, I do. the daughter just read this text. Yeah, you know. yeah, this is from Latoya's daughter. Yeah. Latoya's daughter says the movie is amazing. All caps. My experience was indescribable. Couldn't hold back my tears. Not even at the beginning. I couldn't. 
I was speechless. I even ran into old high school friends that didn't know it was me, and they cried when I told them and said how amazing God truly is and how strong God's grace is. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone that played a part in bringing it all to life. Wish I could thank everyone myself, but maybe you can tell some for me. LOL. White heart, thank you. Praise hands. Okay. So White I heart. Would, she just, <laughs> I know, right? But she just, she just, uh, I just read this to her a second ago as we were coming down. She got emotional. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, I don't doubt that it happened. Because um, I do think that there is a possibility for us to all be dealing with something like that, dealing with our own demons. And so I, I definitely do think that it did happen. And then reading that, I mean, how could you not? Yeah. You know? I think this goes back to another theme in the movie, which is to, we keep talking about it. We keep saying believe black women, which I think is good, but I think it's even simpler. Just listen to them. You know what I mean? Make a space for their stories. Why do we doubt the things that they say? An awful so, scene with, with, with Glenn and, and Colleen Camp. <laughs> yeah, where I love Colleen. She's so amazing. But that's, that, to me, that's a, about a black woman needing to be believed, or at least heard, yeah. if not believed, yeah. and not being heard. And again, that, that could be that scene in the basement where her mother is backing yeah. the psychologist rather than her. Mm -hmm. And even the, even the scene where a black woman doesn't believe a black woman. Mm -hmm. Monique doesn't believe her. And uh, it goes to Kamala right now. You know, we got black people not believing Kamala that she's black. Mm -hmm. Believe her. I do. We're out of time. Two zeros, three zeros. <laughs> Let's thank these guys for this wonderful movie and for being here tonight. <laughs>